Well, this handsome devil, oh, he wants the treats. There you go, right, buddy? Uh, there we go. Is, uh, I want to say Burton, uh, no, don't tell me, Banner. Uh, he's the, uh, is it from Bruce? Is he the, um, yes. the Hulk? <laughs> you got a Hulk fan right here. I'll give you the bully, bully stick. This is his roadmap to success. Uh, basically, he's a great little dog. I think he's just a little bit confused about his position in the house. He has a couple of rules, actually a lot more rules than most of my clients, but um, he's still, I think that he was petted on demand. He was nurtured at, at some of the wrong things. Anything your dog's doing when you pet is what you're re rewarding. And there are times where the dog jumped up on people or was barking and he was given a treat or petted, and that will make him bark more or jump up more. So I went over my petting with a purpose philosophy, which is basically if the dog comes up and nudges you for attention, barks at you, paws at you, for, does anything to add, puts his chin on your knee, Tell it to sit. If it's already sitting, ask it to come and sit over here or ask it to lie down. It has to do something to change its state in order to earn or pay for that affection. And once he does, then pet him under his chin and say, just sit, just crash, just come, whatever the word is. Um, and then you can pet him as much as, much as you want after that. Now, uh, even if you want to pet him, make sure that you still make him sit and then you can pet him for as much as you want. I use this hand lotion. I had cut my hand like this. I go an arc over his head and I was putting him into a sit and I lower my hand. I let him lick the treat off. It's a good way to teach the drop. Up, drop, there you go. And then, uh, so I rock it over his head, put him in a sit. And then as soon as he sits, I lower it, let him lick it off. And then I tickle him under his chin because we're not always going to give him a treat. And remember, petting under the chin facilitates nose up. Dog with feels good, has his nose up in the air. So, um, all right, so uh, the other side of that, and remember to use the word paycheck if you suspect somebody's petting without a purpose. The other side of that is what I call passive training, which is waiting for the dog to voluntarily offer you the behavior or action you want and petting them within that three second window. I remember always pet or correct within three seconds or stop petting if he's trying to do the paw thing. Um, so basically, um, every time he comes to you, pet him and say come. Every time he sits next to you, pet him and say sit. Every time he brings you this, call it rope. Uh, call it, name all your toys, and this way you create a vocabulary for him, um, and he's motivated to want to do those things because those are the things that get your attention. Jumping up on you no longer gets attention. The sitting sure does. Well, the dog's going to offer to sit more and more often, and that's a more polite behavior. It's going to eliminate a lot of problems on the road. Also, it's going to help him identify as more of a follower. He carries his tail very high. Uh, he doesn't always listen to his guardians unless they have treats. Um, if the guardian starts withholding, I'm only going to pet you if you do something like sit or come and lie down, he's going to do that more and more often. Um, we also, also talked about adding in some additional rules. Um, the guardians had most of them, but like sitting, waiting at the door, sit at the door, wait three seconds, tell him to sit once. If he doesn't sit, wait three seconds, then walk away, sit down, wait one minute, then try again. This time ask, wait for two minutes if he doesn't sit, then four minutes, then eight minutes. So basically we keep doubling the length of time until he sits when we get to the door and tell him to sit, and then that open, we open the door. Remember, light switch on, light switch off. So if I'm petting him like this and he puts his paw on me, that's when I stop petting him. If your guest is petting him, he starts barking, then we stop petting him. Uh, one of the things we can do is what we call a negative punishment. Negative punishment, negative means to deduct something from the equation. So if your guest comes in and, also, and he barks, all three of you get up and leave the apartment. Well, shoot, that's the opposite of what I was trying to accomplish. I was telling the guest it's time to pet me. Well, I think that he's just used to telling people what's going on. See how his tail's already a little bit lower? So that's what we're looking, that's what I would ideally would like to see right there, parallel with the spine. Nothing wrong with it being up, but that means he's more assertive and, and thinking he's more in that leadership position. Uh, come up with a list of the official command words and use exclusively come rather than come, come here, over here, here boy, and say vocabulary to each other if we're using the wrong word. Say paycheck if somebody's petting without a purpose. Say testify or whatever the fun word that you want to use that means you're missing an opportunity to reward desired actions or behaviors. Um, one of the rules, I'd like to see the guardian switch from a free feeding situation to a structured feeding situation. Now, the write-up that's going to be directly below this one on my website, I show three dogs how to wait for permission to eat their food. So I invite you to watch that video on structured feeding and repeat the same thing. Just make sure whoever's feeding them eats something first, that dogs eat in the order of their rank. Uh, we uh, went on a little walk. I showed the guardians how to use a martingale collar and the special twist of the leash. Remember, when you're on a walk and he's reacting, increase your distance. Outside, a couple of houses down, there's a wonderful alley that I went over counter conditioning with the, uh, uh, on how to use it to help him create a positive association with the sight of other dogs. So um, practice that, and remember, uh, keep the distance. So have one of you outside, out front, and come up with a system. So like you say, one, you're like, that means I got a one dog coming with level five energy, which would be the maximum energy. Or I go, then that's a one dog coming with the lowest energy. 
if, it, if you get a 1.5, then you know that you're gonna have to move further away from where, uh, down that driveway and put him back into a sit. Make, make sure he's sitting and you're smashing that tree and he's looking at the tree. Make sure he's not looking down. Um, for, because of it, it has a little bit of a hard mouth, um, get a, a metal spoon, put his kibble or a treat on it, keep it at the same level. He'll bite the spoon a couple times and it'll teach him to start using his lips as opposed to his, uh, to his teeth. Now you can also practice this at home and if you're doing one of these like this, so now he's just going for the treat. So that's my way of saying yelping is when dogs, uh, that's how they tell each other uh, that it's too hard. So you might want to practice that inside. It's harder when he has the stimulation of other dogs, he's going to lose control like the kissing story that I told you guys. But if you practice inside when he's nice and calm, he can develop that skill set. And as a dog behaviorist, it's what I try to do is I try to recreate a situation where the dog has failed, recreate that situation in the easiest capacity possible and helping the dog practice the first step over and over. Only when I do the first step consistently do I do the second step and practice that one over and over. And I do all the individual steps then I bring all the steps together, and again, in the easiest capacity possible, then I gradually make it more and more challenging. This is like I talked about in the video above for teaching your dog to focus, is first we do it inside when it's easy, one second, one second, then we make it harder, one second up to 15 seconds, then we do it outside in, uh, in the hallway, then we do it on the street, but not on the street in the little courtyard area, then we actually do it on walks. When we do it on walks, don't stop. Do it while you're walking. As you remember, if I was walking by that guy, now I was holding the treat there, but if you develop a strong focus, now at first you might have to walk parallel when one of you is walking in the street with the dog's walking on the sidewalk and say focus and the dog's walking looking up at you and you're going that treat down towards him. Eventually you should be able to walk around him, oh, next to him. Now I would do that, I'd go out try to make, set a, a goal for like maybe every day at 5 o'clock or whatever time you're home uh, that dogs will be walking by. 4.30 to 6 is going to be your ideal time. Find like a 10 minute period where you can go out there and practice that counter conditioning and get progressively closer and closer. Remember he has to stay seated. And eventually it gets to the point where out there, pretty much on the sidewalk, he's watching dogs walk by. Then pick dogs that have a low energy that are walking next to their guardian and just say, hey, would you mind if we've been working on our dog, dog manners? Would you mind if we walked with you to the corner? Sure, free country. And so it's human, human, dog, dogs on the outside, nobody's in front, and the dog gets to see, smell, and hear the other dog, but doesn't have the pressure of actually playing with them. After a while, the dog will want to play with them because I hang out, I walk with this dog all the time. Maybe we should chase a squirrel or chase the ball. Ideal. Um, now, speaking of chasing the squirrel and ball, um, exercising a little bit more in small sessions throughout the day is going to be beneficial. Um, remember to exercise before the walk if he's too excitable, take off that excess energy. Uh, remember to walk through him and not around him if he's standing. His needs to learn to get out of your way and don't shrug, uh, shove walk, just walk normally. If you strike him a little bit with your foot, we don't want to hurt him, but we, we need him to learn to get out of our way because we have baby coming. Now, for the baby, when the baby comes, a dad should go to the hospital, get a towel or a little hand rag, and then ask the nurse, or you can do it yourself, wipe the whole baby down on both sides of the towel, bring a Ziploc bag, don't let anybody else handle it, fold it up, and, or just put it in that in a Ziploc bag and zip it shut. What you wanna do at home, what I usually do, is I have a handful of treats in one hand and the towel behind my hand in the other one. I pull it out, the dog sniffs it, I pull it away and I drop a treat on the ground. And then I pull it out again, the dog sniffs it, and I pull, make sure it's this akimbo sort of movement. And eventually, when you hold it out, hold it about an inch or two away from his nose, and he'll lean towards it to sniff, and then pull it away and drop a treat. Do that about, uh, maybe probably about five to ten treats, three times a day, or maybe five times the first day when you get home. Don't do it all in a row. Do it and have a dinner, and then do it again, watch a little TV, do it again. The idea is we're introducing the scent of the baby to the, to the dog without the presence of the baby or the crying or all the energy, because there's going to be a lot of people coming to visit the baby. So we do that each day um, for three days, usually mom's in the hospital for three days afterwards. And the, the first day I do the akimbo deal, second day what I do is I put it on the ground and he comes over and sniffs it and I drop a treat on the towel. And each time I make sure you put the Ziploc bag back in the, uh, or the towel back in the Ziploc bag and zip it so it retains the baby's scent. So now, first we're introducing the scent and then getting a treat. Now I'm getting the scent and I'm getting more treat. And now by the time the baby actually comes home, he feels good and confident. Now, mom is probably gonna have a baby shower here soon if she hasn't already. Um, you're gonna get a lot of lotions and oils. Um, a couple little tips, my, uh, uh, my sister told me these two tips and uh, women who are pregnant love them. Get, this is not dog related, get a baby briefcase on Amazon. It's a, it's a folder that'll help you keep all the paperwork that you're gonna get from dogs, uh, for the baby. Uh, every mom I've talked to that's gotten this is like, that thing is a lifesaver. It just made things so much easier and I don't have to stress. So get one of those. 
And then uh, the other one, I can't remember what it is, some buttermilk or whatever that women put on their, on their belly so you don't get stretch marks. <laughs> I can't remember the name of that one. But the smell uh, is really uh, is prom proximate and prominent, and it causes dogs to be confused. I sometimes have, I have one guy who had, he's like, my dog is racist. Your dog is not racist. What it was is people who are typically have darker color skin are get a little bit drier skin. You use a lot of lotions. A lot of those lotions have the same core components. And so the dog started to smell that association with the guy that was actually abusive, who was a person of color, and the dog associated the same thing. Well, we don't want the dog to have a negative association. When the baby comes in, and suddenly I smell butt paste and all these lotions. So you're gonna get all these lotions. So every day you take a new lotion and put a little stripe here and a stripe there that's gonna be on the baby. And now the dog smells all those lotions without the presence of the baby. So it's practicing being around, that's normal. It's just, that's the smells that we have around the house now. Also, uh, uh, set, uh, the guardians are moving to a new location when they do. So practice, I forgot you're moving, so practice the heck out of it here. I don't know where your new location is, but you might not have one of those uh, uh, driveways that's as awesome to do the counter conditioning. So um, when the baby comes, make sure that uh, he goes to the doggy daycare the three days the baby's there, so he's just nice and exhausted. I would recommend testing out a couple doggy daycares and trying to find one, and he should probably be going there one week, uh, uh, one day a week, so that he gets comfortable with that setting and hopefully makes some buddy dogs. You might want to ask the, the people that the watch the dogs, hey, can you let us know if there's a dog that he likes to hang out with? We're looking for kind of, you know, for him, he's, he's, he doesn't have a lot of dog buddies. And so if there are somebody that here, we want to bring him back in when that dog's here so he has a buddy and has more confidence. And so we want to get him used to doing that on a regular basis. That way when baby comes, our energy is going to be all different. We're going to be stressing and thinking about baby, and the dog's going to be very perceptive of that. So we get him used to doing that. That helps him deplete uh, his excess energy, puts him in a position to succeed. And by that time when the baby comes, dad doesn't have to worry about rushing home. He's in doggy daycare. Um, let me see, what else? Um, practice going into the nursery before the baby comes. Go in there, don't let him cross that threshold. And spend some time in there with your tablet, watching TV, eating some meals, doing stuff, and he should not be able to go in there at all. Because that way when mom comes in there uh, and wants to uh, change the poopy diapers, that's very in in intriguing to the dog. We want the dog to understand, I'm not allowed to go in there under any way, shape, or form. And that way a mom has a sanctuary to go in and kind of hang out with the baby. It's nice and quiet. Um, let me see what else. Uh, for the barking, I think it's demand barking. And so make sure that you don't even look at him when you don't shush him, no response whatsoever. The only response that would be appropriate for dog barking would be to leave the room completely and close the door behind you. And you wanna do that like within maybe the third bark. Bark once, okay, bark twice, third bark, I leave. Well shoot, that's the opposite. I wanted you to pet me, not to leave the room. And after enough, but your timing of that has to be really crisp. You can't bark, bark, bark for five minutes, and then you leave, then he gets confused as to what it is. Remember, consistency and forcing rules uh, is gonna be really helpful for him to learn. Uh, that's why we wanna use, uh, I wish I had my camera here in such a cute little pose right there uh, on the floor. Um, so basically, uh, the more that we can help him learn that the barking does not give me a response, then we don't have to worry about when the baby comes, him barking and waking up the baby. Definitely do not use a shock collar to stop him from barking because that usually just trades one problem. Instead of mar barking, I'll go around and mark your house to let everybody know that there's a dog in charge around here. On walks, don't let him mark. Make sure you give him a one minute free on each block that you go to. Undo the martingale, let him sniff around and pee and do what he wants to do in his free zone. Then we put the martingale twist back on and we go and walk another block. So he's earning that privilege uh, by, through good behavior. But asking a dog not to sniff on a walk is, almost, is basically cruel. Uh, let me see, what else? Is there anything else we want? Uh, use the escalating consequences to disagree with unwanted actions and behaviors. If you forget what those are, message me. I have videos to show that cover those. I also have videos on the counter conditioning, so if you have questions or things are not working for that or anything else, make sure you let me know. If I don't hear from you, I assume that means everything's going wonderful. So I want to make sure that you guys are getting the dog behavior you're looking for. Um, now you can use the hand motion like this to call the dog. Now he's, he's looking at it, but he's not coming to me. So now I'm gonna make a kissing sound. I'm gonna lower the tree. When I lower it, I'm gonna tilt my fingertips up so he can't block, so you see it. So I'll, I know you can just watch from there. Banner. Put him in a sit, I raise over his head. Come. And not good come, just come. All right, Banner, come here, man. This is Banner, and this is Banner's Roadmap to Success. Remember. Everything you do trains your dog, only sometimes you mean it. Thank you, buddy.